Hey everyone, Meocity here, welcome back. Today I thought we'd do something slightly different and kind of go over the mods before uh, jumping right into the estate, so that's what today's episode is about. Tomorrow we'll jump into the actual estate itself. So, uh, as you can see, I've kind of fixed a few things and been testing a few th This uh, test estate is on week 98. I have gone farther into it, but this is just testing the most recent things I've added, <laughs> even though I said I was happy with where it was at, and then I added like four more things. So this has a lot of mods in it. Last I counted before I added the more recent things, it was at 184 mods with 59 heroes in it. Modded heroes, mind you, on top of the vanilla heroes that haven't been taken out, and all of the vanilla heroes have had reworks done to them, so everything, except the bounty hunter, should be playing at least slightly differently, and there are skins for most of the vanilla heroes as well, so this is going to be fun. As you can see, I've also fixed the mouse desync, so I turned my mouse back on, so I can point at what I'm talking about, finally. So this will be an interesting one, I'm kind of excited for it, but just to kind of show you guys what uh, to expect here, I have a lot of the basic stuff like the tooltip fixers and things like that, so a lot less blue strings, uh, the trinket plus, all that jazz that all my previous estates have pretty much had. I do have more available quests though, and what that does is since I have Vermintide, I have Sunward Isles, and I have a few other things that add more available quests in the game. More available quests make it so that every area should have at least one quest available at all times. So if I wanted to go to an area and actually level it up, uh, I can do that rather than going, oh, I actually can't go to this area like I had the problem with in the last estate. The one problem with that is sometimes there's not the difficulty I want. This should help with it, especially with the fact that I'm leveling 59 modded characters on top of the vanilla, which I forget the exact number of right now, but the fact that I'm going to have 70 different characters to level right now is... Uh, I shouldn't have too much of a problem finding something with that difficulty to go into. The other big um, modded thing is uh, story bulls come out with more stuff. Who would have thought? And uh, game tweaks. So he's with this mod fix the thing that Red Hook kind of broke with the color of madness. So 100% stress reduction is 100% stress reduction. If you saw me kind of talk about that in the um, challenge estate. Things like the Darkest Dungeon 2 should work as intended now, and if I somehow get stress reduction to minus 100% otherwise, they should get to minus 100%. It also uh, fixes some healing stuff where I can go above 100% if you like get your healing received over 100%, you actually get that amount, things like that. It's a nifty little one, so if that works as intended, that's going to be awesome. And otherwise, there's just a bunch of other fixes and things like that. I did add the Mimic mini boss, and he had to go really high up other than, like, I usually keep my mini bosses way below everything else. But the Mimic mini boss had to be way up here on the load order just because it goes by this Creeping Mist thing too, which brings a lot more into play. Um, it adds a new variety of traps so that if I step on them and fail to disarm them, uh, it spawns monsters. It also has a new wall. Um, it brings the one from the Crimson Courtyard into the normal game, and it also has a more curios to interact with in the entirety of the base game on top of some other stuff. It has its own mimic, but that mimic didn't seem to work for me, and it's supposed to have like a 1% spawn chance and a 2% spawn chance in the cove, but it would just stand there to be honest, and like just pass its turn. So that's why I went with the Mimic mini boss from the first estate, and he works. However, he has a much higher spawn chance at like a 13%, and I'm not sure if he stacks with the, the Creeping Mist one where he has a double spawn chance in the cove. You also need the Mimic mini boss patch here to make it work with the Creeping Mist. The other thing about the Creeping Mist is it changes how Nerob and the Banshee mods work, if you have them. Nerob will need a key to now work with the Curio, and the Banshee will now need a shovel to work. Otherwise, things happen to you and you don't get the fight, so just keep that in mind, or I'm gonna have to keep that in mind, and you will if you download this at all. Otherwise, yeah, like, I think it was a blight that happened to me on a Banshee, and I, I only found the Nerob once. 
So I use the key and it worked, and it tells you in plain red text, hey, use this, so it's fairly obvious. But I never got to test what happens to me if I don't use the key. Then of course I have the Courtyard Plus. I actually brought the Manor in, which I actually have not played too much with. Uh, there's Fire Attacks, which will go down further, Sunward Isles, Roaming Raiju, Vermintide, like I said, the Farmstead Plus. Uh, I do have a few problems with Courtyard Plus on my system in particular. It happens whether I have a lot of mods or Courtyard Plus is the only mod on my computer. So I'll go over that later because I know some of the fixes and how they work for me, uh, just in case anyone wants to use this mod list. But yeah, it's a little weird. And I did have to take a Pet Cemetery off just because I thought it might be interacting with uh, Courtyard Plus here, just for uh, safety of the file here. But I will be doing a file for an estate for Pet Cemetery at another time. And uh, we'll just go through that as a kind of little one short one off and hopefully get through it. Then there's a bunch of uh, these skins here. They had to go a little bit farther up once again just because they weren't working. But they're cute little uh, pets for each of the vanilla heroes or the ones that are out so far. So a stoat, not entirely sure what a stoat is, but then a fox. There is two different cats for two different characters and a rat. Got a lot of the Cho's reworks, one of which has summons, so you use that at your own peril. I know a lot of people don't like summons. A lot of the cerebral reworks again. I did say I got the fire patch working. Turns out my problem was I didn't have both of the heroes that were required for it. Dummy me. I think it was the uh, Arsonist and the Runaway, and I didn't want to be using the Runaway or the Arsonist. So that's a thing to keep in mind. Then a lot of the reworks for normal characters as well. All 59 of the heroes, or at least the ones that could fit there. <laughs> so there are a lot of them. Some of them, most of them are in alphabetical order here. The ones that aren't uh, are the, there's like two or three that aren't in alphabetical order. The White Priestess here had to go at top because she has a problem with Rampart, it's even listed on her page, where if she's in the same list as them, the animations might not appear, I guess. I don't have this problem, but you might, so you might need to choose between the White Priestess and the Rampart. She's also a little weird in the fact that if you don't have the five skills on your uh, mod roster, she still comes with five skills equipped. So I'm not sure what's up with that, but that's an easy fix if you don't want to ha happen, just equip four. I think that just is because she has a free skill or something like that. And then some more skins for some of the uh, vanilla characters, at least. Then all of the different patches for like say koala's creature collection bristle and bone uh, here be monsters then we have a bunch of the like roaming mini bosses extra monsters uh the chirujan however you say that is the one i tested yesterday because he literally just came out yesterday uh, as of me recording this and and like i said a bunch of different quests mini bosses stuff like that like I said before, Nerob and the Banshee do have that little bit of a rework with the Creeping Mist, but it's not too much to uh, change. You just got to remember to bring the uh, supplies. The Manor has a little bit of a work in with the Sunward Isles if you put in the Twins. I could not get them to spawn for the life of me, but evidently there's a wandering mini boss that once you beat the manor, that will start spawning in the Sunward Isles. Never got it to spawn, so I'm not sure the spawn right there, but could be cool if it happens. Not sure the load order there is right. Once again, this is all done by me, so load order could be completely screwed. <laughs> uh, then district stuff like that, trinkets. And faster walking, faster scouting. Know your curio for the areas that do work. There are a few areas that this doesn't, so keep that in mind, but it does help with a lot of the stuff in here. And then extra backgrounds and stuff like that. So just kind of a 
quick, like, hey, this is what to expect, things like that. Uh, I planned on also going over some of the things that I know are problems for this estate. Uh, for those of you who kind of wanted to use it for yourself, because I know that's always a thing when I go through these. From like least janky to slightly game breaking janky, and I will have some screenshots for things like this. So I already kind of went over the uh, Rampart and the White Priestess here. So that one is, take it as you will, It there's slight animation issues. Uh, there is another one with the Magician mod class mod in here. There's actually two of them. With her, she has a summon because she, well, she technically has a summon on one half of her ability. It's kind of weird to explain without like actually using her. She can switch her abilities kind of like uh, the Abomination without like actually transforming. It is very odd to explain. So as uh, abilities, right? And like a full set. And then if she uses an ability, she switches the effect of the abilities essentially. On one ability, uh, it, what it does is it will summon. And if you use that, obviously it summons. And if you use the other side of the ability, it doesn't summon. I never had a problem with the ability that doesn't summon, so I just know a lot of people have problems with summoning abilities. So if you don't use the summoning portion of that ability, it's fine, I just never tested the summoning part. And the other part of the Magician is that she has a skill that is 100% no matter what happens, like there is no percentage, it will stun an enemy. And what's supposed to happen after that is it's supposed to give the enemy an extra turn because of how broken it is so that they recover from the stun. However, what can happen is instead of giving the enemy an extra turn, it gives the magician an extra turn. The more broken part about that is she has abilities that do extra damage to stunned enemies. <laughs> so not only can she stun a enemy without even having a check, but then she can do like 200% damage with an ability to a stunned enemy and if you lay that up with say like the bounty hunter and other people that have extra damage versus stunned enemy that enemy is going down really 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 quickly As, like i said it's an ability that doesn't even have a check it's just that you are stunned i'm not sure it works against people with like 500 percent stun chances or stun resistances uh, i never checked that much but it doesn't say you can resist it it just always went off for me so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, some of the other stuff here. I kind of covered the Mimic mini boss, but it does have a chance of just staying there passively, especially if you get the Creeping Mist version of it. That's why I put the Mimic mini boss in here instead of the Creeping Mist one, is the Creeping Mist one on for me on this file. Always just stayed there and passed its turn. So that's a uh, that's thing. The Mimic mini boss may have a chance at doing that. I never really encountered it. And I never encountered the creeping, creeping Mist one, but it's supposed to be a thing in this file. A few of the other things that may happen. There's a small chance that when you get back to the estate from doing any dungeon, uh, the caretaker, or not the caretaker, the ancestor, when he starts talking and essentially says one of his lines going, The poor caretaker, or any of those lines like that and finishes his line, he will just go into another line and not stop. There are two fixes to this. Either are slightly annoying, but basically while you're in the estate and the loading screen, he will not stop. So the two things you can do are simply to close the game. When you reload, he should stop. Or go into a dungeon, he should stop then. And if he doesn't, simply close the game again. He'll be good. The other one major thing is kind of with the Onward Isles before we get into like the more game breaking ones. There is a slight chance that the stuff for the Night Parade, anything off of the base Onward Isles on this file won't work. I don't know how to fix that one. Other than starting a new file and then it should work. I don't know what causes it, but it's happened like one out of five attempts for me. Where, like, I have the Sunward Isles quest done, I have the Sunward Isles at level 7, I have characters at level 6, multiple characters at level 6, like multiple teams, 
like I can't do anything else in the Sunward Isles, no quests will spawn, or like no, none of the quests will spawn that I need to progress it. So the Night Parade and none of the other like stuff for Sunward Isles all in one will go. It's just I've done the Omi Bozu, and that's that. That's a sign that you may need to restart the file, unfortunately, if you want to continue with the Sunward Isles, and because then you won't get like the Raiju or the. Uh, Night Parade, like I said, or anything like that, unfortunately. Um, some of the other stuff here. We'll go with the jank on the Crimson Courtyard. The Courtyard Plus. So once again, this is one I have uh, screenshots of. There, this one happens to me regardless of if I have a lot of mods or if Courtyard Plus is the only mod on a file. So this is why I think this might be a me problem and a my computer problem. I don't know. But I'm just putting this out there in case anyone encounters these issues too, so you know how to get around them. So these only happen with these two enemies that I'm showing right here. The Butler and the Kokot. Every time I start doing this, I forget what they're called in the base game. That's what Courtyard Plus turns them into. And it can only happen to them usually when they are in human form. I don't think I've ever had this problem when they are in their uh, Bloodsucker form. Their barks or their skill names will, one, not go away, and two, sometimes they will just skip their turns, are kind of manageable as long as there are more enemies with more actions, those will eventually go away, or anything like that. And as long as you have an item that is usable, generally you're fine. But the big thing is, if you end the combat while the bark is still there, or like, say, mind your manners in this example, um, the game can freeze, base essentially, because you won't be able to move. You won't be able to abandon your quest. The two things that you are able to do is use an item, and usually if you use an item, uh, you continue on with the game. Otherwise, what you have to do is close the game, reopen the game. When you reopen the game and get in there, you're still not going to be able to move. Then, you go, even though you're not able to move, you're able to abandon the quest you're still able to get out of there otherwise you have to debug mode your way out and then the final piece of like kind of game breaking jank i've run into uh originally i was gonna say can only happen in the quest rewards because that's the only place i had seen it up until uh i was testing out the uh chirurgeon for this estate but that's no longer the case so i have to kind of take all this with a grain of salt now. Uh, so here are the screenshots of kind of what to look out for. Uh, these actually can come in um, any design box. The Sunward Isles one is just the one that came up most prominently. And strangely enough, uh, the design box doesn't matter for the area. <laughs> strangely to say. So you can see, find a Crimson Court Yard one in Vermintide, you can find a Vermintide one in the Darkest Dungeon, things like that. It's really weird. But if you see a design box like this and it has no trinket in it and you go over it and there's no tooltip in it, don't do the quest. I'm not sure exactly what's in it. I've not really gotten an answer when I've asked about this, but maybe I've just asked in the wrong spots and no one's really gotten back to me about it. Essentially, every time I've gotten a trinket that looks like this, my game ends up breaking shortly after getting it. You can't get rid of it. Uh, so once you get it, it uh, you can't sell it, you can't equip it, it's just there in your trinket inventory. And up until recently, you only got it from quest rewards, but when I did it with the, got it from the Cherujan, it was an item that I got as a like battle reward, and when I took it from him, it went into my inventory, and then I couldn't trade it out of my inventory. So that's the thing too. So now uh, I know I can get it from like just a battle reward too. And I'm guessing some of that has to do with load order. Some of that might have to do with like how I placed some of the mods. And I haven't ran into that very much with this estate. It was a big thing in my last estate. I haven't run into it since I've reordered everything in this estate yet and I've done a lot of testing for it like multiple estates into hundreds of weeks but just as a kind of like hey if you see anything that looks like this do not do that quest do not get that reward it may break your game if you are like using this estate um 
it, it, it can be very, very bad. I've never had an estate last more than like 10 weeks after getting something like that. And once you get one, they become a lot more prominent and a lot more quests are going to have them. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the deal is with them once again, but th they are bad. And then kind of on to like, hey, for people who want to use this estate, some kind of quick tips for you. One, if you want to add more to this estate, you may want to use the, um, I always forget what the tools are called, but I don't use the thing that gives you like extra RAM or anything like that, or that gives you access to more mods easier. I'm just using my computer. Uh, for example, when I tried to add more of the Dungeon Meshy characters, the chef for example no matter where i put him the game just simply would not load past the initial opening cutscene uh for the estate any of the dungeon meshy characters wouldn't i'm guessing because of how many items they add not the class in particular but just how many things they add to the game and there's a lot of classes like that so be careful about what you add if you're using this mod list and not taking anything out you may need to use some of those tools I'm sure there's a lot of resources out there on how to get them, how to use them correctly, and then you should be good. And then if you're going to remove anything from this list, because there's a lot of stuff I can see people not wanting, especially say the Mimic mini bosses, you need to remove things in chunks generally. So say if you want to remove the Mimic mini boss, you're going to have to remove the Mim Mimic mini boss Creeping Mist version and the Mimic mini boss. And if you don't want the creeping mist version of it in there too you're going to have to remove all three say you don't want the runaway in here you have to remove the runaway and all the fire patch things in there otherwise the game will not load because the fire patches in here rely on the runaway say you don't want this the coir hunter you also have to remove the coir hunter patch simple things like that but you have to kind of remove everything in chunks otherwise it won't load if that makes sense otherwise there's a lot of things in here that should just remove one by one, but you kind of just got to look around because not all of it is together because of where things have to be placed. And uh, you, you should be good there. It's just, yeah, ma making sure everything goes away as needed. I know this is a lot of mods and a lot of people might not necessarily want all these heroes because that's a lot. and It takes a lot of time just to level some of them up. So I, I understand if a lot of people would want to remove some of them, it's just removing all the patches associated with them. So that's everything for the upcoming estate, kind of what to expect with it, and kind of what you would want to do if you are going to use some of this mod list. So that'll be it for this time, and the new estate should start tomorrow. As always, wish you all well. I'll see you next time. Please have a good one.